Um, hi everyone, I'm Fiona, um, Senior Orthodist here at the Northern. Um, I'm going to talk to you about a few different braces um, that we commonly use for fracture management um, and that you might see either in your practice or that you might be um, fitting to patients in your practice. Um, in your handout notes are uh, pretty much um, a bit of a description of what the brace does, what we're using it for, what type of fractures, um, and just some basic information about where you can go to find those braces um, and sizing information and costing information that you might need for your patients as well. Um, so the first one we're going to look at is a cam walker. Um, so you probably really commonly see these wandering around the streets sometimes in your practice. Um, so a cam walker is a controlled ankle motion walker. Um, so you'd be using this um, to stabilise or immobilise the ankle. Um, ankle fractures, um, occasionally you might use it for short term for a severe sprain or strain. There's ligament injuries, we also use them for um, Achilles tendon um, ruptures or tears commonly as well. Um, and post-surgical um, treatment as well. Um, so what I'm going to do is use our lovely model and basically put it on. Um, just give you a few pointers, things that you need to be looking for um, when you're fitting these braces. Um, simple sizing, extra small, small, medium, large, extra large. Um, you don't need to take measurements, you take an eyeball of the leg. Um, I'd probably look at a medium um, for this. Um, and as much as anything, the main thing you want to make sure is that the toes are fitting within the boot. You don't want toes hanging over the end because otherwise people end up stubbing their toe all the time. Okay. Um, so basically you're just opening up the boot, dropping the foot in. You want to make sure that the heel is right in the back of the boot. Um, close over your, your liners. And the liner is purely there for padding and protection of the leg. So this doesn't need to be tight. Um, the straps are what actually immobilises the foot and the ankle within the boot. Um, we usually recommend you start and you tell your patients to start with the ankle strap because that's the one that holds the foot down and back within the boot and stops any um, dorsiflexion or plantar flexion of the foot. Um, so you secure all your straps. Um, when they're putting the boot on, um, it doesn't need to be really tight. It just needs to be firm enough that their foot isn't moving around inside. The arms on the boot are like levers, so if you do it up really, really tight, it just ends up uncomfortable for the patient. It doesn't need to be really tight to immobilise well. Um, the most important one is the bottom ankle strap there. Um, if you have a look at this one, I'd probably say that that's probably a size too big. Um, you can see she's probably got that much gap between the toe and the end of the, the boot. Um, so you could try a smaller size. Um, their standard length. Um, so again, if you've got a really, really short person, sometimes they do come up quite high on the knee. Um, but as long as they've still got full knee range, you don't want to be immobilising joints that you don't need to. Um, Probably the important things um, to look for once you've fitted the boot, you want the leg to be vertical within the boot, okay? And that can be adjusted by taking the liner out of the, the actual boot and changing the angle of that. Um, so you'd get your patient to sit up on the floor and just check that their leg is vertical when they put their foot to the floor. Um, the other really important things are to make sure your patient's safe to mobilise with a boot. You can see on the bottom it's got a curved sole, what we refer to as a rocker sole. Um, so some people that have balance issues can find them really difficult to mobilise with. Um, and sometimes people will need crutches or a mobility aid to safely use a CAN boot. Um, and we would use a physio in that case to assess whether they need an aid. Um, Sometimes these boots are also used for patients to be partial weight bearing or touch weight bearing as well, depending on their injury. 
um, and that's fine as well. That's if they're full weight bearing. Um, any questions on that one at this stage? Everyone's going to get a chance to put one on a bit later, so you can have a bit of a play and 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 see what they're like. They're relatively light. They're probably about the same weight as a plaster once they're on. Um, of course, the beauty is that they can remove them for showering, mm -hmm. and if they have a, either a stable fracture or are stable postoperatively, that they can remove them for sleeping as well. Um, again, you'd want to choose your patient carefully. Can be compliance issues, um, and if you think that someone is not likely to wear it, then sometimes a plaster is a better option for that patient. Um, you're looking at about fifty dollars to buy one of these boots wholesale. Um, so if you're getting one in for a patient, that's the the rough idea of price you could give them. Yeah. Um, they are single use items. Everything I'll show you today is a single use item, so they can't be reused from one patient to another. Um, all right, we'll keep going. Might be a bit of noise, but we'll see how we go. Um, all right, so that's a cam walker. Um, yell out with any questions along the way as you go. Now, I might just quickly take that. So do they come in different foot sizes or is it small, medium? Yeah, so the small, medium and large change in both length in the foot and the, the length over all of the legs. Yeah. Um, you can get these in what we call a low rider version. Um, we very rarely use them. Because if you're fitting a cam walker to someone that needs ankle immobilisation, you just don't get as good immobilisation if you use a low version of them. Um, and in terms of the restriction to a patient, whether it's coming up to mid chin or below the knee, it really makes no difference at all. Yeah, so we tend to use the long ones um, for better immobilisation. Um, so this next um, brace I'm going to show you is what we would call a sports ankle brace, or um, they're sometimes referred to as a figure eight. Um, brace. Um, this type of thing you might use um, short term post um, ankle soft tissue injury. Um, more commonly people use them for sport um, if they have had a soft tissue um, ankle injury. Um, they have plastic stays in the side which provide some resistance mm -hmm. to ankle inversion and eversion um, and when you put them on and do them up tight they do also um, restrict plantar flexion and dorsiflexion slightly. Um, but these would yeah, pretty much be used for sports um, use as well. Um, again, they're just sized a small, uh, medium, large. Um, and on the packets of these, they'll usually have a shoe size to give you an idea of which size you're looking at. So these ones, they have laces, um, which you do up first. And then the wrap around um, ankle straps. Okay, so once you get to the straps, this is where they get their name of figure of eight. They wrap around under the foot and secure on the outside of the ankle. Once they're on, they're pretty restrictive. Um, really common for netball players, um, particularly people that don't want to tape if they have sensitive skin or that sort of thing. Um, I've used <coughs> one of these on and off for about 10 years playing netball. Every time I sprain my ankle I wear it again for a while mm -hmm. and then I get sick of it <laughs> and then I sprain my ankle again and I go back to using it for another six months. Um, but yeah, they're not designed to be worn day in, day out. Basically like um, Caitlin said, mm -hmm. um, if you're immobilising soft tissue for a long time you can end up with more um, issues than the protected mobilisation. 
but you do not need a slightly larger size um, runner then if you're going to have this on underneath because I don't think I could get my tennis runner over this. Mm -hmm. um, they do take up a bit of extra room yep. so sometimes you might need to put a thinner inner sole in the bottom yep. of the runner. Um, sometimes you can get away with just loosening the laces right off. Okay. Um, yeah, I have to admit I found that once I'd used it for a while I had one very stretched shoe yep. and one firm shoe. Okay. The next one we've put in the handout is what we call a stiff soled shoe um, and these are um, tended to um, used for either stable foot fractures, metatarsal fractures, sometimes toe fractures um, and we also use them a lot in um, diabetic patients that need protection or offloading of um, particular areas of the foot. Um, they're basically immobilising um, the joints of the foot um, much more than a regular shoe will do. You can have a feel of it later. It really is a stiff sole. You get no movement of the sole at all. Um, again, your basic sizing, extra small to extra large. Um, and you're looking at about somewhere between $10 and $30 for one of these. So for someone that had a, a metatarsal, uncomplicated, undisplaced metatarsal fracture, um, something like this would be a perfect option. Um, the second shoe we've put on the list um, is what we call a plaster shoe or an overshoe. Um, if you've got patients that are in a walking plaster, um, then something like this can be really helpful just for protecting their plaster and stopping them from wearing um, through the soles. Um, again, it's got a rocker on the bottom, um, so just making sure that your patients are safe to be walking with a rocker soled shoe. How much are they? Um, they're about, say, 10 to $20. Yeah. Okay. You might have seen these in your practice, Zimmer knee splints. Um, basically using these for immobilisation of the knee. So it might be if someone comes in with a suspected injury and you need to immobilise them for a short time until you can get some imaging done or some more tests done to confirm an injury. Um, simple wrap around um, knee brace. Sorry. You can see the shaping in the middle. You're looking at that lining up with the patella um, of the knee. Again, they're just a simple wrap around and secure your Velcro. Um, the other thing, sometimes these are used for are patella fractures. Um, that might need, again, short-term immobilisation, but no surgical or, um, or other treatment. Um, and they're something that you could easily keep in your practice if you're having people come in um, with um, suspected injuries as well. You're looking at around $50 for a Zimmer. Um, and they basically come in two sizes, um, and you could pretty much choose to keep one size and you would cover... 90% mm -hmm. of the population. Mm -hmm. Everyone other than your, you know, your, your four foot, you know, little old ladies pretty much can fit in one of these. Yeah. Can you just point out, lots of people don't know that you can adjust the width, the sides. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, so they think it doesn't fit, but you can actually yeah. make a really big difference. Mm -hmm. So this is actually a three panel um, brace um, and the, the side panels are just Velcroed on. So you literally can pull them off. Mm -hmm. Um, and either make it wider or narrower. So if you've got someone with a very wide leg, you can still fit them because it makes it a really large circumference. And if they've got a very narrow leg, you just move them closer to the centre to make it narrower. Yep. Um, some of these come without that width adjustment. So it just depends. You could buy these in probably 50 different brands off the internet. Um, so depending on which ones you get um, will depend whether they're adjustable or not. Also, you need an ED all time for tip plateau fractures as well, as the other thing. Yep. Um, this one um, is a bit like what Caitlin showed before on the brace. If you had someone with a ligament injury, so this is um, what we call a hinge knee brace. So a Zimmer is essentially a fixed knee brace, and this one is hinged. The beauty with these is that they can be locked in different ranges. So it could be locked in full extension for an initial injury and then um, increase the range of movement later on to allow um, a graduated rehab program. 
Um, particularly for um, tibial plateau fractures, often we allow sort of mid-range, so not full extension and not full flexion, um, and we can lock it to allow those ranges. Um, again, um, it's like the Zimmer, um, the straps all slide um, through the side pieces, so it can be adjusted to fit a very large or a very small length. Um, it's also adjustable in length, so it has adjustments on the side to shorten or lengthen it. Um, this is not likely to be something you'd be fitting in your um, GP clinics, but you might be seeing them on patients that are coming and going. Um, so at least you know, know what you're looking at. Right. Um, and the final one um, I've got is a wrist race. Um, so these are commonly fitted um, post-surgical um, ORF of wrists. Um, occasionally for um, a patient that for whatever reason can't have a plaster on a wrist fracture, um, if they had wounds in place that needed to be checked or um, stitches that they thought needed to come out in a short time, so rather than putting a plaster on and taking it off and putting it back on again, um, sometimes we might use one of these. Um, these ones are left and right specific, so you have to have the right brace. Um, and just again, extra small to extra large in sizing. Um, and the sizing for these pretty much just adjusts the circumference. So this one I've got basically adjusted as small as it can go. Um, so a smaller size would actually be better. Um, you can also get these with the thumb um, immobilized as well, which we sometimes use for um, fractures in the base of the thumb. Whereas this one we would use more for a wrist um, injury. Um, I, we don't often would put a soft tissue injury in these, again because it's immobilising them. Um, so these would be pretty much restricted to a, a fracture or a post-surgical um, use as well. Alright, any questions on any of that? No? Who wants to try them on? <laughs> Everyone. Yep. All right. So what I might do is just put a few out on each bed, um, and you can all have a go, being the patient and being the the clinician, and try them on and and have a walk around in the cam walkers, see how they feel. Um, you know, just think about what sort of advice you might be needing to give your patients, and that sort of thing.